Hey everyone, today we're going to be vacuuming these aquariums. It's been about two months. The gravel doesn't even appear to be dirty. Sometimes when you see dirty gravel, some people assume it's all poop. It's not. It's silt after the poop has biodegraded, just like the bottom of a pond. It doesn't look good, but it's also not harmful either to let your tank get like that, as long as you do water quality testing occasionally. Up here you got the two big placos, there's a cichlid down here. And over in this tank, look at this vine coming out of here. This stuff is invasive inside an aquarium. Alright, I'm going to be vacuuming this aquarium. Have it hooked up to the sink, which is creating a nice suction. Start it up. I'm not going to do a very thorough job. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want some of the beneficial bacteria to remain in place. And this is not even that bad. I've seen stuff that's a lot worse. Which is actually a real ceramic pipe found at someone's estate sale. They knew what they were worth. They charged me a five bucks for each one. Those are pretty cool. Fish can swim in and out. A lot of waste likes to collect underneath these structures. Again, it doesn't have to be too thorough of a job. You want some of the waste left behind with the bacteria. Yep, did a pretty good job. It's, I can't get a dirty shot like I did a moment ago. Alrighty, time to put this back and move on. My little thermometer just came out. Alright, that's pretty clean now. I'm not getting any more filth. Remove the skull, which had some stuff inside it. Go ahead and scoop up that down inside the pipe. See, did a lot collect in there? Yep, a lot has collected inside of this pipe. This is a vertical reinforced concrete pipe four inches kind of rare these days to see reinforced concrete that small I'm gonna go over to the next side LG eaters aren't doing as good of a job as they used to so I can see a bunch of green algae on the surface of the tank that means I gotta decrease their food then they'll eat it clean up the tank Got some pretty cool videos of the time lapsing that I used to do. I used to time lapse it. And I'm cleaning up the cage. Because they don't ordinarily live in here. Let's see how much is inside this pipe. Barely anything. I think they're able to get down inside there and possibly eat it. The other one was blocked by the skull. Almost done with this tank. By the end of this, it'll probably be a 30, maybe 40% water change. You don't want to do a full water change. It'll shock the fish, shock the bacteria. And if you live in a city, don't recommend you do more than 30 or 40% because it's most likely going to have a little bit of chlorine in it. As long as it's only 30%, that won't affect the fish. It'll evaporate within 12 hours or so, especially when you have a big air stone like this agitating the water. It'll be out pretty fast. One of the algae eaters is in the cave. Do a little bit of cleaning inside here. Probably not too much because they're pretty active stirring it up. Not as terrible as I thought. And look what I found in there. The missing intake for the filter that was knocked off like a month ago. See, not too bad in there. Done with this tank. And we'll leave it at a 30%. Look at that. So much in there. Hook it back up to the filter. 
Love these filters from Walmart. They're self-priming because the impeller's underneath. So in a power outage, you don't have to worry about pouring water in the back to prime it like the old-fashioned types. Disconnect the siphon. And we'll go down to the bottom tank, which I'm not going to show you because it's so dark. Not very good for filming. And this tank is actually pretty clean. It doesn't even have to be done. But because I keep topping it off as the water evaporates, I am going to do it just to get the minerals out. Because if you don't get the minerals out, you see this little bit of white forming. If you see anyone's tank that has all kinds of white residue all over the top of it, it means they're not doing water changes or they just have extremely hard water. But typically it's because of neglect and they will just keep topping it off, not removing any water. But the minerals remain as the water evaporates, causing very hard water, which is difficult for the fish to live in. All right now this tank is going to be really dirty, and I, but yet I barely feed anything. It's because of all the plants. As leaves die, they fall in here and they decompose. It's essentially silt, like I said. Most people would assume this is poop, waste, but it's really not. That airstone, I oh, that airstone's not working now because I just did a 30% water change on another tank and without that water being deep there's not enough pressure to go into this tank so as soon as I fill the other tank back up it will start working in here again I'm doing a quick water change in here not water change, partial water change getting a little bit of minerals and some of this debris out of the gravel then I'm going to come back in about a week or two when the bacteria has recovered completely from this. There's only one animal in here. It wouldn't hurt anything if I did it all today because I'm not doing a very thorough job. The filters in here, oh, they're not even that bad. But I want to do some more cleaning in here. Alright, now I'm going to start filling the tanks back up. This tank doesn't have much water. It's a 30 gallon tank, typically halfway filled for a frog. It's more of a terrarium. So now that's about a 40% water change. We're going to walk over to the sink right now and reverse it. Reverse the flow. Now it's going to be pumping it to the tank instead of vacuuming it up. And we're now filling it back up. The water will clear up to be crystal clear in a matter of probably 20 minutes or so. The filters will get this really clean. Any particles floating will be quickly sucked up. This terrarium to run the water features has two filters and the air stone will start working as soon as I get the other one. Anything residual will settle. It'll be crystal clear in about 20 minutes. Now I gotta run shut the water off as soon as it gets up to height. I would like to keep it like just about up to here so the frog has no problem getting up top. The only animal in here other than the frog is there's an algae eater in here if you can see it. All right, I'm all done with this tank. Up top. Now because I'm doing such a small water change, the temperature also won't shock them either. It'll circulate fast, the heater will get it back up to temp fast. I have it set at about 76 degrees. And this will probably drop it back to maybe 69 or so. The water coming out of the tap is not freezing from a well or anything. It's town water. And you saw how I did the little scoop. Why can't I use this right here? Because if I shut this off here, the water pressure in the town is too strong and it will snap off the faucet and just go all over the floor. Because the fittings like this are plastic. The threads are so cheap they strip. And you can buy a metal one, but they're like 30 bucks for the adapter. It's not a big deal. When it's time, I'll just run over to the sink and shut it off. And like I, you saw, I did between tanks, whoop, you got like a couple seconds of wiggle room. Really good aeration there. Got to turn the filter back on the moment. Didn't want to burn out the impeller with it being off. See what I'm doing now? I want to keep that away from the heater because those bubbles the air, if it hits the heater, could cause it to crack. Then you'll get electrocuted if you stick your hand in. Especially standing on this concrete floor.
after just a little bit of time the water has cleared up now you can see the Placostomus fish in there pretty big one hope this video was interesting thanks for watching